The new auto assemble feature is a great way to create assemblies fast. This is how it works. You want to make sure that you're creating your prototype assembly along the red axis. You want the start of the assembly to be near the origin and you want the assembly to progress along the direction of the red axis. So this is what happens when we create an auto assembly from a single component. We'll place the component near the origin, select it, and then click auto assemble. What happens is a single component part is created and it is an end component only. It will not be placed at the start or at intermittent points along the path. This is what happens when you build it. Now in order to create a component part at both the start and end of the path of the assembly, you need exactly two copies of the component. Now when I select both components, click Auto Assemble. Now we have a component at the start of the path and at the end. But again, we're not getting infill components yet. In order to generate an infill component part, you need to have at least three copies of the component at exactly equal spacing. So now what I'm going to do is select the original component, make three copies at four foot spacing, select them. Now when I click auto assemble, you can see that it created an infill component at exactly four foot spacing. By default, this will use fixed spacing, so if you want to change it to a max spacing equally distributed, just click the max checkbox. When you use the auto assemble feature, you need to use either components or profile member groups. It's very important that if you're using profile members, they have to be groups. If you've converted them to a component, they'll be treated as a component part instead of a profile member part. So let's add some profile members to this auto assembly. As you can see, the top and bottom rails are both profile members. So to add them to the auto assembly, we're just going to create them. Again, they have to be along the red axis for this to work. So here I'm just adjusting the position as well as the start and end location of the profile member so that the offsets and the setbacks will be calculated correctly. So now I've got three component parts and one profile member. Select them, click auto assemble, and now you can see that a profile member part has been created. Now the great thing about auto assemble is that the start and end setbacks as well as the offsets have already been calculated by the auto assemble tool. you can see that this profile member has the setback already implemented as well as the end setback. Now let's add the bottom rail. I'll show you what happens if we draw the profile member and it's not along the red axis. Now if we select them, try and auto assemble, we should get an error message. Profile members must be drawn in the direction of the red axis. Now what can happen sometimes is you might have accidentally drawn the profile member backwards, going from right to left along the red axis instead of from left to right. So if that happens, just, um, just right click on the profile member and choose reverse selected. So let's fix that up. We'll draw the bottom rail about here. Again, select, auto assemble, and now our top and bottom rails are in place. Now another thing that's very important to mention is that all component parts need to have their blue axis pointing up before using auto assemble. So you see if I double click into this component, you can see the blue axis is pointing up. If I were to have rotated this object so the blue axis is no longer up, you'll get an error when you try and use auto assemble. All components blue axis must point up. And at this point, the object that has an error will be selected, so you can easily see which one you need to fix. Now you can add as many profile members and component parts to the auto assemble as you like. Here I'll add some intermediate spindle parts. You 
make some copies and again making sure that the spacing between all of them is identical. Let's try about 22. So because this spindle component was placed offset from the origin along the red axis, it will have a start setback associated with it. As well, this part will also have an end setback associated with it because it is offset relative to the very end location of the assembly. Finally, we select all the parts together, hit auto assembly one last time. The assembly is almost completed. There's just a few things we got to do to clean up. First, we need to change the start and end points for this bottom rail so that the start and end setbacks will be calculated correctly. I'll do that with the extend tool. This one's already good. Click auto assemble again. I'm going to change it to max spacing instead of fixed spacing so we get a nice even distribution of the posts. See we've got a problem here so we're going to change this one also to a max spacing instead of fixed. Select and then apply. So now with our auto assembly complete, we can keep tweaking settings if we like using the dialog or we can save it and then use it again later in a future project. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.